and here I am promising for the third time that I'm publishing Post Ball soon. I guess you shouldn't trust random people on the internet. I underestimated how much polishing the add-on would take. Try to make it the most stable I can, solving huge limitations and some annoyances. Well, it has to be presentable for the first stable release. The biggest limitation I found after file path dependency breaks are node path changes. And I solved it the same way as file paths. Instead of storing nodes by paths in the poselib, they store IDs that point to the paths. If the ID points to an invalid path, the user selects the new path in a pop-up. The way filters were edited always felt really clunky, as they were edited as animations even though they only stored node paths. So they are now edited in a much simpler and straightforward pop-up. Select filtered nodes and that's all, doesn't need all this overcomplicated bullshit. I sorta added skeleton to the support? Well, it's complicated. Reading and writing polygon and bone data is pretty straightforward, but generating a preview, it is messy. It seemed like polygon bone data can only be changed from the editor or something, so I made a gross workaround where bones just worked as remote transforms. So position and rotation could be previewed, but cool deformed polygon shit? Nah. But I still haven't told the best part yet. It was all useless, I tried doing the same thing months later and it worked for some bloody reason. So yeah, funny story, <laughs> I love programming. The pose labs are now independent from the scene. This reflects more my vision for the project that consists of reusing the same pose lib for different characters. This workflow is not fully supported yet though. For now it's more used as a bare-bones manual version control system. Speaking of which, I've made versioning system for Postlibs so they can properly update major changes to its data structure. Though if a Postlib was created before the versioning system, it probably won't work. Made debug mode accessible from the settings menu. Added a sort tracks button to misc option column. It sorts tracks based on the scene hierarchy. Might be useful to animate different rigs on the same animation. They won't mix up. Here's Godet. She's supposed to be the add-on example poselib, so I had to update her to represent a final poselib one would use in a game. Mostly I drew tons of variations for her expressions and hands, created a collection just for her expressions and populated her palette with more interesting poses enabled by new hands. Also made a foreshortened variant of her arm and smeared variants for arm and head so the user has some freedom to play around with the plugin. And finally integrated my frame picker add-on to work while editing a pose. It had to be done. Posepo is basically a glorified frame picker so the two work together like peanut butter and jam. Although making a pose for each frame is possible, it's kind of redundant. Don't try to hit nails with a screwdriver. Unrelated, but I made updates to the frame picker as well. Right clicking in the animation player or animated sprite button will select the one selected on the editor for convenience. This time, I really do believe it's the last develop before release. I have to stop myself from overscoping and adding non-essential features for 1.0. So yeah, some features will be postponed for 1.1 in favor of finally releasing it at the asset lab. I realize it looks kind of complicated without context, so I plan on updating the wiki for more useful guides and probably record some tutorials in this channel. So yeah, test the plugin and if you have any feedback or questions, feel free to ask me in the comments or through social media. Maybe like this video if you want to help me and see ya!